One of the most classic and long-standing theories that I can remember since I caught up on One Piece is that Frankie will turn the Sunny into a giant mech at some point in the story. And honestly, I think right now is the perfect time to discuss that since we finally met up with Vegapunk, whose technology is like it's from 500 years in the future. I mean, we've already seen a giant robot with anti-gravity capabilities, automatic laser systems, space monster holograms, robotic sea beasts, and much, much more. And with Vegapunk being being Frankie's role model and everything, I wonder what kind of upgrades the Sunny could eventually get. And I think the perfect time for Frankie to finally put this all together is in what will likely be his biggest battle as a pirate, which is against the Blackbeard Pirates. And while I was working on this theory, virtually every person told me that Frankie and the Sunny have to end up fighting San Juan Wolf since he is known as the Colossal Battleship and all. So I have a feeling at least some of you clicked on that awesome thumbnail from Lee J Animation on Twitter wondering how I could possibly have Frankie and the Sunny facing off against Burgess instead. So I figured why don't we just start the discussion right there. And what makes Burgess the clear choice in my opinion is the fact that Frankie has a long history of hard-boiled tough guy fights going all the way back to Eni's Lobby vs Fukuro as well as Senor Pink in Dressrosa where I think that was really on full display. And then Burgess is literally a luchador known as the Champion who now owns the Buff Buff Fruit of all things which has the potential to give Frankie the toughest tough guy fight he could ever hope for. Some of Frankie's most common moves are literally strong right and left, Frankie boxing, and he's even used multiple different suplexes before. So I fully expect us to see those featured in his fight against the Blackbeard Pirates as well. But Frankie also has a number of fights that feature his technology more so than his physical strength, going all the way back to the reverse centaur against Nero on top of the sea train, to really any fight featuring the Frankie Shogun, like Fishman Island or against Buffalo and Baby 5, or even recently in Wano vs Sasaki where the Frankie Shogun did actually take some damage. And I think that's a telling sign that we will soon see an improved form of the Shogun and potentially even one that ties to the Sunny somehow. And I wouldn't be surprised if Vegapunk had a hand in this process either. And on the other hand, Burgess himself is slowly turning into a cyborg because half of his face is metal because of the injuries he sustained against Sabo in Dressrosa. So I think a matchup between between these two just makes a lot of sense and provides Frankie the perfect opportunity to show what the Ship of Dreams is really capable of, especially because Burgess is the helmsman of his crew. And if they have a shipwright, we don't know who it is yet, and they always have these log rafts for ships. Maybe there's a reason for that, like their crew doesn't really care about ship quality all that much, and that would even add another deep layer to this potential fight. And another way to tie these two characters together is that they both had opportunities to get the Flame Flame Fruit in Dressrosa, but neither of them did for much different reasons. Frankie turned down Luffy's offer to eat it, and Burgess just failed both in the Coliseum and when he tried to kill Sabo. And Frankie said he didn't want to eat it because he wouldn't be able to swim anymore, and that could potentially be important if he ever merges with the Sunny, since, you know, the Sunny is a ship after all, so it'll probably be near water when that happens. And early on in Egghead, we met several different creations from Vegapunk that could be in the water, either the Sea Beast things or the Vegaforce. So maybe Frankie uses that tech at some point to develop the Sunny even further. Conversely, it seemed like Burgess himself very much wanted to eat that Flame Flame fruit, which is interesting because that means he didn't have the Buff Buff fruit back in Dressrosa, which was only like a month ago in One Piece time. And this is kind of backed up by the fact that he was in the water in the Coliseum and seemed kind of unfazed. So yeah, I think the fact that Burgess wanted that fruit but couldn't get it, and Frankie didn't want it but could have had it, is another interesting way to tie these two characters together. But let's get back into Frankie mode for a minute and discuss why him fusing with the Sunny into some type of giant mech is even a legit theory in the first place. And I think this idea goes all the way back to Thriller Bark, which was actually our first arc with the Sunny as our new ship, where we saw Zoro, Sanji, Chopper, and Usopp grab onto Frankie's limbs to take down Oars. And while that version of docking was going to leave a lot left to be desired even if Robin had agreed to join in, I think this was definitely a foreshadowing for what we'll get towards the end of our journey, and not to mention, Frankie's most recent bounty poster literally just has a picture of the Sunny on it, so I think a fusion between these two is bound to happen eventually. And I know Robin said that she never wanted to hear about docking ever again, but the Sunny does already come with a built-in soldier dock system that may help us explain what a Sunny mech could potentially do. And there are seven different potential channels within the Sunny. Channel 0 basically turns the Sunny into an automatic paddle boat. Channel 1 is Nami's waiver, now known as the White Hot 
Hobby Horse. Channel 2 is the Super Awesome Mini Mary. Channel 3 is the Shark Submerge, which is a mini submarine that ties perfectly to Vegapunk's giant shark robot that he had protecting Egghead. Channel 4 used to have the inflatable pool, but now it has the Black Rhino FRU4 motorcycle that hit Big Mom in the face. And then Channel 5 has the Brachio tank that Usopp and Chopper used early on in Wanda when they also ran into Big Mom. And then Channel 6 holds the inflatable pool that was once in Channel 4. This provides a lot of variety into what a potential future Sunny Mech could do, especially if we assume that Vegapunk will end up sailing away with the Straw Hats. I mean, the Vega Force from Egghead absolutely dwarfed the Sunny, and we even saw giant holograms and an ancient robot running on Ancient Kingdom energy while visiting his lab. There are just so many different possibilities here. I mean, maybe they use the anti-gravity technology to improve the coup de burst, or they can get AI-powered lasers like the Frontier Dome so that cannonballs have no chance of reaching them, or it could even be something way greater than all of that, and I'll actually link a video down below from Hidden Island that discusses that very subject. Whatever the upgrades are though, I think it's fair to say that they'll be significant. I mean, Oda said he wanted to create a mecha-type manga after One Piece ends, and this is really his chance to go crazy with it, and like I mentioned earlier, Frankie broke at least part of the Frankie Shogun during his fight with Sasuke, and he already has a very long history of upgrading his machines with the Battle Frankie series, and Oda actually showed us in SBS 101 that in Frankie's bad timeline, he becomes a literal ship. So hopefully in the good timeline, he can still become a ship, but it's just a temporary thing, you know, like he's docking with it, sort of like he does with General Frankie whenever he pilots it. The Frankie Shogun that we've come to be familiar with over the post time skip is actually made of Wapple metal, which is extremely durable in and of itself, and the Sunny is made of Atom Wood, which is the strongest in the world. Combining the two for one perfect machine that uses the toughest man-made metal and the toughest natural wood makes a lot of sense to me. Perhaps the Sasaki fight showed him that he needs something more than just his Shogun body against top tier opponents, despite the amazing durability that it does have though. And maybe implementing the Sunny is how he does that. Maybe it's as simple as docking different parts of the Sunny onto his limbs and head like we saw in Thriller Bark with some of the Straw Hats. Plus, we know that well cared for ships have Klebaltermon, like the one that the Mary had. And we haven't seen the Sunnies yet despite it being around almost twice as long as the Mary. I suppose part of that is because the Sunny is so durable already already, and Frankie is always around to repair it properly, which was kind of the reason we saw Mary's Klebaltermon in the first place in Skypea. but I think no matter what, the Sunny will need to have one at some point. And we've actually already seen a sentient form of the Sunny in Film Red, so I wonder if that's a precursor of things to come. But regardless, I think it's fair to say we'll at least get the Klebaltermon by the time the Straw Hats are fighting the Blackbeard Pirates, since who knows how much story there will be left to tell after that. I mean, shoot, we're already in the final saga as it is, right? And I think Burgess could provide the perfect chance to bring out the Klebaltermon, as well as test Frankie's shipwright skills to the max, because of what the awakened buff buff fruit could potentially do. Burgess is very interesting in my opinion, because he's one of Blackbeard's oldest crew members, and quite potentially THE oldest, since he is the first Titanic captain. And when he stowed away on the revolutionary ship and found Baltigo, he called Blackbeard Captain Teach, and Lafitte corrected him by saying it's Admiral Teach. How many times do I need to tell you this? Which indicates that Burgess has a habit of calling him Captain and doesn't care to change that. Which is a hint to me that Burgess is indeed Blackbeard's oldest crew member. Despite that, he doesn't seem to be Blackbeard's number two or his right hand because Oda drew Zoro, Katakuri, and all the other number twos or whatever you want to call them in this color page and he included Shiryu for Blackbeard's crew. So while Burgess may be the first Titanic Captain and maybe even the literal first mate by being the first one to join his crew, he doesn't seem to be the actual second strongest on the crew. And like I said, he's also the crew's helmsman, and among Blackbeard's pre-time skip crew, there was no shipwright. We had the helmsman in Burgess, the doctor in Doc Q, the navigator in Lafitte, and the sniper in Van Auger. And now Stronger does have the Pegasus fruit, so he could be a human hiding as a horse, but I'm just going to assume that's not the case for now. And for any crew to function, someone has to take care of the ship, even if they don't have a shipwright, just like we saw with the Straw 
Straw Hats and Usopp before we got Frankie. And I have a feeling that that duty in the pre-time skip fell on Burgess. I mean, it sure isn't going to be Blackbeard, Doc Q, or Stronger. And between Burgess and Augur, I think Burgess makes a lot more sense since he's already a big, strong guy like Frankie. And Frankie was essentially our helmsman until Jinbei joined. So that would be yet another good way to show that these two people are two sides of the same coin, like many of the other Blackbeard matchups will likely be. But if Burgess was ever in charge of taking care of the ship at any point, then that's kind of hilarious because Blackbeard had a literal log raft that was like falling apart in the pre-time skip. And even the ship we saw most recently at Winter Island was just a nicer log raft. And they tried trading Bonnie during the time skip for a warship, so it all really goes to show that Blackbeard's crew must not give much of a damn about being able to build their own ship like everyone else. Now, it is worth mentioning that Blackbeard's main ship is called the Saber of Zebek, which obviously ties directly to the captain of the Rocks Pirates, but we haven't even seen that ship yet in the story, which is almost another example in and of itself that the Blackbeard pirates don't care all that much about using a great ship. But maybe it's because he's keeping that ship safe till a later time because of the inherent risk of sinking out at sea or something. I mean, a Zebek is actually a type of ship that was usually used for trading or merchanting back in the day, and they usually look like the one that I have on screen. So I would have to guess that the Saber of Zebek will look something like this, and it maybe could even hint to what Rox D. Zebek's personality was like. I mean, if those ships were usually used for trading, maybe he really liked money like Nami does, and maybe he had an organization like the Cross Guild because of that, but that's probably a topic for a whole different video. But if the Saber of Zebek looks anything like this ship, then it honestly has a lot of potential for a cool design whenever Odo decides to show it to us, if you ask me. But since Zebek is literally in the name, I also have to wonder if this ship was literally the ship for the Rocks crew and Blackbeard just obtained it somehow. Which brings up the question of where the Oro Jackson is right now, but that's also a whole other discussion. And maybe the reason Blackbeard is keeping the Saber of Zebek hidden away from us so far is because it, much like the Sunny and the Mary, were ships that were cared for deeply by their crew. So maybe it already has a powerful Klebaltermon inhabiting it, and Blackbeard just does not want to risk that by taking it out on random adventures like fighting Law at Winter Island. And I mean, if there's one thing we know about Blackbeard, he's always planning ahead. And maybe the reason they use Log Rafts the entire story is because they're just so replaceable. It doesn't matter if they get broken during one of their journeys or if they need to leave one behind for some reason because they can just go make another one no problem. To them, it might not make sense to invest a lot into the rest of their ship since they have the Saber of Zebek hidden away somewhere ready to go whenever they need it, so the other ships probably just don't matter to him very much. Which would probably make Frankie angrier than we've ever seen him since he learned to love all of his creations thanks to Tom. He learned that if you brought something into this world, you need to care for it because if you don't, then who will? Even if they are used for the wrong reasons or they upset you to no end, you created these things and you need to love those creations for what they are. Yes, at some point ships need to be laid to rest, but it's on you to care for them in the meantime. And in typical Oda fashion, there's even a deeper layer to all of this because Frankie was abandoned by his parents at Water 7. That's why Tom punched Frankie in the face when he said, those pieces of junk aren't my ships. You can't just create things and leave them out to dry like that. So if Burgess ends up being someone who doesn't care about his ship's quality or fixing them when they have issues, then I could totally see Frankie wanting to be the one to take this guy out and use the Sunny to do it so Burgess is also beaten by a ship which would just be very fitting. I mean it would really be the ultimate man versus machine battle in One Piece and with a deeper personal layer to it as well which I think is going to be evident in every Blackbeard vs Straw Hat fight. But that's not all to say that it's going to be an easy fight for Frankie and the biggest reason for that is because Burgess has the buff buff fruit as I mentioned before. And while we don't know exactly how that power works it seems to make him far stronger than a normal human can be, which is fitting for a luchador known as Champion. I mean, just imagine Frankie and the Sunny going 12 rounds with someone who could potentially be the physically strongest man on the planet after he awakens. And maybe to compete with that, Frankie upgrades all of his moves to have Sunny in the name, like Sunny Boxing or Sunny Suplex, Sunny Right or Left, etc. And like I mentioned earlier, we have literally no idea what the Saber of Zebek is capable of since we haven't seen it. But it's an Emperor's main ship, so I have to imagine it's pretty capable. And maybe Burgess is also able to incorporate it into his fight with Frankie in the Sunny. I mean, it is the Saber of Zebek, right? So maybe he can use it as a literal Saber, which is a type of sword. Which is perfect, because Frankie also needs a new sword, since his broke versus Sasaki. What if they both
both end up using Adam Wood swords against each other. I just think that'd be really cool. But the Buff Buff Fruit Awakening is something that I want to talk about a little bit more because I think it could provide a very unexpected tie to the Adam Wood. And that's because Paramecia fruits tend to affect their surroundings, like how Doflamingo turned the ground and the buildings to string, Katakuri turned the ground to mochi, or Luffy turned the ground to rubber. Which I know he supposedly has a zone fruit, but Kaido and Road to Laugh Tail both made note of how that's a Paramecia power, so there's definitely some funny business going on there. But either way, Paramecia fruits affect their surroundings when they awaken, and I think that will be the same for Burgess and the Buff Buff fruit. And yes, I'm sure Burgess himself will also reach a new level of strength when he awakens, but I also think he will be able to make the environment around him stronger, or potentially even weaker. Maybe he can turn normal wood to the durability of Adam Wood, or Adam Wood back to normal wood. And maybe this fruit is tied to the strength of the Adam Wood to begin with. Like someone awakened that fruit long ago in the past and made the tree absurdly durable so that it would never break because it's important for some reason. And conversely, Burgess might be able to decrease the strength of things too, so that Frankie's wapple metal and the sunny aren't as durable as normal. Which falls right in line with the Blackbeard Pirate's whole shtick of using the most scummy, underhanded tactics possible. But we learned recently that hockey can negate devil fruit powers. So maybe Frankie and the Sunny will be able to toughen themselves back up at some point too by negating the powers of Burgess. I mean, the Straw Hats are already overdue for hockey upgrades in my opinion, so this would be a good way to bring that in on the biggest stage. And just like the rest of the Blackbeard vs. Straw Hat fights, which I've already started making videos for, including Brook vs. Vasco Shot, which you should definitely check out after this, this fight has a lot of potential to carry more weight than just a position vs. position matchup or rank vs. rank matchup. There's a much deeper level that ties to their conflicting dreams and ideals. And that's exactly how it should be when we're talking about two of the strongest crews in One Piece facing off to make their captain the King of the Pirates. I can definitely see Burgess showing off his absurd strength by maybe breaking ships in his own fleet and throwing them at Frankie, and maybe even buffing those ships up to Adamwood level beforehand. This would be like a double whammy where not only does Burgess not care about these creations, but he also makes Adamwood level ships willy-nilly, and it costed Frankie a literal fortune in tons of labor to make his. It might be kind of like that Spongebob episode where King Neptune makes a million Krabby Patties, but Spongebob only makes one that he put a lot of love into, and that's what gave him the dub. And I think that extra layer of carrot admiration that Frankie has for his ship will be the difference. I mean, who knows what the Sunny's endgame Klebaltermon could be capable of? There are actually quite a few people who believe the Grim Reaper and Wano could be Pluton's Klebaltermon, so I'm not ruling anything out at this point. It's One Piece. Devil Fruits have wills of their own, swords have personalities, and the whole world runs on willpower. So if there was ever a time to see what ships and Klebaltermon can do in the world of One Piece, I think it would make perfect sense to happen in the final fight for the Ship of Dreams. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe because there are many more videos coming soon. And if you want, you can even check out these videos that you should probably already see on the screen. Later.